Hi everyone and welcome back to another one of my videos. I know it's been quite a long time since I last uploaded but thought this was an interesting computer to show you on YouTube. It's a Dell Dimension really as it came from the factory, a Dell Dimension XPS T500. It came with a 17 inch CRT monitor, a Dell QuietKey keyboard, a Microsoft mouse and some Harman Kardon stereo speakers, all in the lovely 1990s, early 2000s beige grey colour. The specifications of the system are that at the moment it has Microsoft Windows XP, it has a 500 megahertz Pentium 4 processor, 11 gigabytes hard drive and also 256 megabytes of RAM. Now as you can see the system is in excellent condition but it's a little bit more grubby than I would have liked so the first thing I'll be doing with the system is I'll be giving it a bit of a clean with my favourite for this type of plastic and it'll just be a basic kitchen cream cleaner. Uh, that really really lifts the stains out of the, 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 the plastic so I will do that. Um, and then round the back of the system we have our normal PS2 ports, a printer parallel port, a serial port, a game port and our normal audio jacks. Now I remember back in the day that these always used to be colour coded and they used to be colour coded as the PS2 mouse was always a kind of turquoisey greeny colour as we can see. The monitor was always blue. The PS2 keyboard a purpley colour. The game port a yellow colour. And um, other audio jacks were coloured in their own personal colour as well. And I always thought that that was just to make it easier for any, I suppose, new computer users. Uh, to be able to really distinguish what plug to plug in to where on the back of their new computer system. Now let's have a look at that monitor. The monitor was manufactured in June 1999. It's a 17 inch M770 Dell monitor. And I remember, and I can't remember if this is completely accurate, but I do remember that some of the monitors back in the day, I think, had Trinitron tubes in them. Normal VGA connector there and a grubby cable. And then again, looking back round to the front of the system, it's by no means a flat screen monitor. This has got the normal CRT bump. And then we also have the mouse and keyboard again as we've done a complete 360 of this system. So I've done an initial cleanup of the computer and it is really looking uh, great now. Just a uh, cream cleaner all around the system. Although we've run into a bit of a problem uh, when I've been trying to install the operating system. I thought I'll stick a Windows 2000 disk in first of all um, and then that will mean that I can easily format the hard drive and get Windows 98 on. Now the first thing is, I don't know if you can hear 
Um, but the hard drive that came in with the computer, which is an IBM potentially Death Star, is on its way out. Now it does actually load, but it is very, very slow. So I decided that I was going to attempt to replace the hard drive with this Maxtor unit, which is roughly the same age, slightly newer, manufactured the 24th of July 2001. But this hard drive also appears to not work. It is extremely whiny and I'm going to have to resort to using a slightly off-brand larger 40 gig hard drive and I noticed that I've got still I've got some spares all the way up um, in this section called components I've got plenty IDE hard drives to check and use in there so I think with um, having to say goodbye to the IBM desk star and hear the noise that it's making. But it was a 12 gigabyte hard drive manufactured in May 1999. Good opportunity though to see the system as it is uh, opened up. So here is the system here. In order to get at the hard drive, you need to take the front panel off. It just clips a couple of screws uh, and then you can take the hard drive off. It's normally situated just in here. We've got a 56K modem, graphics card, um, and the system has 256 megabytes of RAM, 500 megahertz Intel Pentium 3, uh, as I mentioned before. But the machine itself has cleaned up really, really well. And I really do like that quiet key keyboard. So what I'll do now in the next part of the video is I'll pop in a working ID hard drive, make sure that my jumper settings are correct, because of course on ID drives, you need to tell the drive or the BIOS where exactly it sits on the ID cable. Is it a master? Is it a slave? Should the cable decide, or should um, it, or is it connected to an IDE belt that is uh, has another peripheral, such as perhaps as a CD-ROM drive or a DVD drive connected as well? So I'll set that up. I'll get a hard drive in, and then what I plan to do is just really use the Windows 2000 setup disk to get a nice FAT32 partition on the on the new drive. So here we go, the IBM OEM drive is a non-starter, as is the Max Tor, and I probably removed that from something else and kept it as a souvenir rather than throwing it out. And then I'll be popping in this, I know this one works, I bought this from new in about 2004. It's a 40 gig, so at least I've got something to work with. But unfortunately, these drives are dead.
And so now the moment of truth. I've installed the new hard drive, created a FAT32 partition of 20 gigs, installed Windows 98 second edition, and as you just saw, installed the drivers from the Dell Resource CD. A rather cumbersome task, I might add. So will this Microsoft Windows 98 installation go as planned? Let's just build some final driver information databases for the audio controller and we should hear the sweet sound of Windows 98 and its welcome menu launch for the very first time. So that is it everyone, a complete introduction to the Dell Dimension T500 in all its beige glory with 17 inch CRT monitor and a Dell QuietKey keyboard along with a lovely Microsoft mouse in PS2 and the Harman Kardon speakers, which as you might agree, sound pretty good for being 21 years old. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next video.